Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another uh, video tutorial about the assignments for the week of February the 16th through February the 19th. This is the first video of the week. There are gonna only going to be two assignments this week and probably two videos. So what I'd like you to do is go to Schoology and let's get this assignment. Okay. Assignments for the week of February 16th through the 19th. And Chapter 6, Anticipation Guide. So, let's go ahead. And there's two pages here. So let's upload both pages to Notability. Create new note. Import. Okay. First page and the second page. Okay. All right. So now we should be able to write on these things, right? Correct? Correct. All right. So let's take a look at these bad boys. Now we're looking at <clears throat> chapter six the land changes hands. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is take a look at our Northern Lights book, and that is found in the blue M, right, everybody? MNS, MNHS Education. Remember to log in, 656 student, one word. Then the password is capital S, E, C, E, D, E, one five exclamation. Secede fifteen. Okay, let's go back here. Let's go back to notability. Now I'll write this down. Okay, everybody. Six five six student. Secede fifteen. There's an exclamation point. That's how you log in. Okay, that's the login information. Whoopsie. Please don't forget that. Thank you. Okay, let's go back now. So, go ahead and just remember you're going to tell me if you agree or you disagree, and then the sentence you found this in the book. And the page number, okay? So let's go to MNS Education. Chapter 6, Land Changes Hands. Don't do that. There you go. Hello. So, start at the very beginning. Here we go. So, the treaties made between the American Indian Nations and the United States were complicated. Because the balance of power was equal between the two nations. Okay, a treaty is a written agreement between two or more nations. Got it? Good. All right, so let's take a look at this. See if we can find it. For nearly 150 years, European fur traders and travelers had come and gone from the land we now call Minnesota. Most of them were not interested in changing the ways of the Dakota and Ojibwe or in owning the land. The traders and their employers, the big fur trading companies from France and Great Britain, were mainly concerned with making a profit. Okay, we know this. Those fur traders that came here, they didn't want to own the land. All they wanted to do was trade for the furs and get out. So, do we come across our statement yet or anything that proves it or disproves it? No, so better keep going. So fur trading companies, though, were not the only ones in North, to see North America as a source of profit. In addition to animal furs, North America was also full of other natural resources. Remember, natural resources are things that you find naturally in nature. Grass, water, trees, etc. North America was also full of other natural resources, such as timber, 
trees. Tobacco and food were valuable back in Europe as well. At different times in the 1700s, France, Britain, and Spain had all claimed they owned these natural resources and controlled trade with the American Indians. Sometimes European countries fought wars over who would control North America. Other times they made agreements to sell their claim over a section of land to another country. These arguments over who controlled North America affected American Indian nations such as the Ojibwe and Dakota. Remember, in the state of Minnesota, were, there were two Native American groups, the Ojibwe and Dakota. Who was here first? That's right, the Dakota. Now remember also, there are hundreds of Native American tribes in the United States of America. Hundreds. We're only concerned about the Dakota and Ojibwe for right now because we're in a class called Minnesota Studies. So at first they traded with the French, and then they traded with the British. Beginning in the early 1800s, they were no longer trading with the Europeans. They were now dealing with a new nation. That new nation is called the United States, whose citizens were called Americans. Since their families had mostly come from Europe, they were European Americans. Hello. So, in 17... So, have we come across our question yet? No, we haven't. So, we got to keep on going. So, in 1783, the United States won independence from Great Britain in the Revolutionary War. You remember that. It was in all the newspapers. Over 200 years ago, the United States, we got in a little disagreement with Great Britain, and we fought for our independence. It's called the Revolutionary War. We won that one, even though Great Britain or England, is whatever you want to refer to them as, had a much more powerful navy and army than we had. But we beat them. Soon after, the new nation looked to expand or grow to the west. Yeah. Remember, our country was settled on the east coast, and we expanded westward. As a result of winning the war, the United States claimed control of land previously claimed by Great Britain or England, however you want to refer to them. This included much of the land between the original 13 colonies and the Mississippi River. 13 colonies. That explains why there are 13 stripes on the United States flag in reference to the original 13 colonies. So, this included much of the land between the original 13 colonies and the Mississippi River. Britain controlled much of Canada, and France and Spain still claimed ownership of land in Florida and west of the Mississippi River. That's where you and I live. We live west of the Mississippi River. Just barely, but we do. In reality, however, this land belonged to hundreds of American Indian nations that had lived here for centuries. If the United States wanted to expand, it would have to acquire land from those American Indian nations. That's the problem. Boy, we'd really like to expand and move, this is the United States talking now, and move westward. But we can't because there's somebody living there already. What are they called again? Uh, the Dakota and the Ojibwe, in, in reference to this area here, of course. Boy, that's a problem. Yeah, I'd like to get that land, but the Dakota and Ojibwe live there right now. So what to do about that? What to do? Oh, my God, let's go. So in the early 1800s, thousands of European-American settlers were eager, were so eager, to go west that they had moved onto land still belonging to American Indian nations. Naughty, naughty. Can't do that. Can't move on to somebody's land, to some a land that belongs to somebody else. That's called trespassing. Major, major mistake. The United States government supported this westward expansion by acquiring land from these groups. Sometimes the United States made written agreements. These written agreements were called treaties with American Indian nations to buy land for cash and goods. Oh, so how, how would you like it if somebody came knocking on your door? Hey, I want your house. Well, no, we live here. Well... Still want it? I'll give you some, some. I'll give you some money for it, and some other stuff. Hmm. Okay, let's think about that. So the making of treaties was, and still is today, a familiar practice between sovereign, self-ruling nations. Last paragraph here in the bottom of page six point zero four. We still haven't come across our statement yet. So let's keep reading on, okay, peeps. 
So the treaties between the American Indian nations and the United States were complicated. However, because the balance of power was not equal, both sides knew that the United States was more powerful. It had more money, more people, and more military power than individual American Indian nations. As a result, most treaties favored the United States government at the expense of American Indian nations. Hello, this sounds pretty weird. Hey, that's our statement. So the statement here says the treaties made between the United between the American Indian nations and the United States were complicated. Yeah, I get that. Because the balance of power was equal. Oh, major, major mistake. Nada. Uh-uh. Uh, it was, they were not equal. Disagree with that one. So, what did it say in our text? It said the treaties... between, made between, the American Indian nations and the United States was complicated. Complicated because the balance of power was not equal. The power was not equal. So, and that's on page, uh, what was that, six point something or other? What page was that bad boy on? Don't tell me. I'll get it. Six point zero four, humans. All right. So, the treaties made between the United, American Indian nations and the United States were complicated because the balance of power, here it says, was equal. No way, Jose. It was not equal. Guess why it was not equal? That meant that somebody else had more power than the other group. So, when they made these treaties or agreements to buy this land... United States and the American Indians. The treaties, the agreement, a written agreement between these two or more nations, these agreements were not equal. Somebody had more power than the other. Guess who had more power? Oh, I bet it was the Native Americans, right? No. Uh-uh. So... If you look on here, if you look back, so the power was not equal. And according to the book, it says, the treaties between American and the nations was complicated because the balance of power was not equal. Come on, get back where you were. Both sides knew that the United States was more powerful because the United States had more money more people, and more military power than individual American Indian nations. As a result, most treaties favored the United States government at the expense of American Indian nations. Okay? Okay. So, that's how I want you to fill this thing out. So, that was page 6.04. The next one said, The first land deal made in Minnesota is between the Dakota Indians and the United States by a gentleman named Zebulon Pike. Tra tra tra. If you go to this next one, the first land deal, if you look, on here about the first land deal, see a section called the first land deal? That's where you'll find that answer. 
The next one, the United States built Fort Snelling because they needed a military base. Ah, that would be found in this section called a place to gather. Okay. Okay. The next one, the head of the American Fur Trade Company was Zebulon Pike. You'll find that under the section called the fur trade at Mendota. The next one, the Dakota and Ojibwe believed that the land they lived on, they owned. You'll find that under the section called different perspectives. The next one, in the 1830s, the fur trade was becoming more and more profitable. That's under changing times okay next one american settlers didn't start moving into minnesota until the native americans were paid for their land all right hang on a second here sports fans one two that is under American Settlements Grow. All right. Next one. Minnesota became a territory in 1849. The first step in becoming a state. That is under the segment called, you guessed it, Minnesota Territory. <laughs> Next one. Alexander Ramsey, the first territorial governor of Minnesota, wasn't, a, wasn't very interested in signing a treaty with the Dakota. Hello, that's under Minnesota Territory as well. Okay, all right, and finally the last one. The Dakota were worried that they would be cheated by the, that they would be cheated by the government by signing the treaties. That one, my wonderful people, is located on this section, the Treaty of Mendota. Okay, is that right? Is that right? All right, that's where you'll find all that information. Please let me know if I can help you further. Thank you very much. Send me some emails if you want to. Have a good day.